Uh, it was good. No, it was uh, a lot of food. Um, that's for goddamn sure. Is it just like a seafood place or like a Cajun place or like a... It's it's mostly seafood. Uh-huh. Um but they had like uh like I had the the surf and turf burger which was mm. a hamburger with a melted cheese uh grilled onions and a shit ton of lobster meat on top of it. And like like it was generously portioned, with, especially with the lobster meat. It was kind of ridiculous because you know you get something like that, you're kind of expecting some chopped up pieces, kind of sprinkled on top. Mm. Dude, the whole claw meat <laughs> and big chunks of lobster in it. It was Damn. ridiculous. It was really good. Sounds like my type of sandwich. It was. It was. Uh. Yeah. It was like. Yeah. Uh. I had the epic shrimp burrito. Uh. And it was pretty epic. It was very large. Um. Had lots of scrimps on it and rice and French fries. Nice. Where's uh, this place? It's re- so remember where the Carl's Jr. was down the road from work? Oh yeah, just past uh, um, yeah. uh 75th. Where Toys R Us used to be. Where yeah. Yeah, 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 it's right there. Oh, did it take over for that Carl's Jr. or is it just yeah, yeah? Carl's Jr. It's now two different places. Costa Vida, Mike, yeah. is that what it's called? Yeah, it's one half of it, and then Slapfish is the other. Weird that they would. Split a restaurant, a fast food restaurant, into two restaurants. Yeah, it was very strange. Uh, but it was it was real good though, real good. That's cool. Um, Mike had lobster taquitos, taquitos. for an appetizer. Nice. Yeah, they were ridiculous too. Yeah, they were real good. I'm good. I love taquitos. Yeah, and they were fatty ones too, like fucking big old ones. Yeah. I was like, okay. Like I, was, I was surprised by the, the portions, like how much like lobster meat you're getting on stuff. And like his burrito, because they serve it cut in half so you could see inside of it, mm-hmm. was like mostly shrimp. With a lot of those places, you get a shrimp burrito. They're going to fill it up with like a lot of rice and a lot of other shit and then some shrimp. Right. This one was like mostly shrimp. The burger had a shit ton of lobster meat on it. The lobster taquitos were fucking stuffed. It was It was really good. Nice. And the guy said uh, he thinks, I mean, it's just somebody working at the counter. It was obviously like a manager or something, but he says he thinks he has the uh, the best uh, fish and chips in town, too. Mm, and I like, really? fuck with that. So I was like, uh, I'm coming back because everything else was really good. I want to try them fish and chips. Fish and chips is one of my favorite things. Yeah. And you have the ability to add uh, all these different other types of fish, including lobster. Uh, two year fish and chips as well, which is pretty insane. All right, so we'll have to try it sometime. Yeah, pretty good fish and chips. And Paige had the clopster, ma- or clopster grilled cheese, Jeez. and it was it was cheese sandwich with lobster and crab, and crab. Ooh, yeah, and quite a bit of it too. It's pretty good. Pretty good, but anyhow, yeah, <clears throat> that was lunch, and then we went to Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Target, and then comic books. Jesus Christ! All that before comic books? Uh, yeah. Wow, comic books have taken a slide. Well, you know. It- Nothing really new was coming out, so I was like, everything's going to be in a box, so I'll be fine. Fair enough. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. If it was a big day of like comic books first, then we can go everywhere else. But it wasn't. But Strange, Strange Adventures did come out today, Mike, or Joe. Cool. Numero Pick 9. Maybe next week. Yeah. Maybe next week. Well, no, wait. Not next week. You won't be here next week. I will not be here next week, no. Yeah, so I'm not going not going to the comic shop alone. What? Why not? I don't like going anywhere alone. Fair enough. To be fair, I don't really like going anywhere at all, but still. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, true. but less likely you don't like to go places alone if you do go places. Yes. Yes. Unless it's a food place. I'll go to a food place alone. That's fine. Okay. All right. To bring it home, or do you eat at the food place by yourself? Mostly to bring it home, but I I have been known to eat at the food place by myself. 
Man, I hate statement. doing that. There's nothing that makes me feel sadder than eating in a restaurant by myself. Nah, I don't feel sad doing it. <laughs> it feels empowering. Oh, yeah, that's true, I guess. Like, I've gone to the movies by myself, too. I've done that before. Yeah. That's not that big of a deal. It's kind of weird at first, but then you're like, you're not fucking talking to the person during the movie anyway, so... Nope. And less likely, they're going to talk to you. (laughs) Oh, Subway uh, joining the Restore the Snyderverse uh, movement, huh? Thanks, Subway. That's the backing we needed. Every little bit helps there. Every little bit helps. I guess. I kind of don't want it to happen at this point. Don't get me wrong. Like, had everything worked out properly, I think uh, the Snyderverse, restoring the Snyderverse would have been cool. But the way, obviously, shitty fans are being shitty uh, recently, uh, apparently they've been uh, going to Kong versus Godzilla's IMDb page and just, like, shit reviewing it. Oh, good. Saying, bring back the Snyder Cut and I'm like well this is why we can't have nice things yep, guys that's... because you're you're just awful people yep you're just being you're being shitty for no reason yeah so I don't think we should I don't think we should get it at this point yeah, I don't this, want it uh, the, the other the toxic fans uh, make it not deservable for us yeah but the toxic fans is also the reason we it's all fucked up in the first place so. also true oh absolutely so really take them into consideration with anything that you feel because they just ruin everything either way because it's the exact same fans that shit upon all of the other movies and yet they want to restore the snyder cut snyder yeah it's awful uh the ringer website which is a uh, originally was like a just a sports website that bill simmons started after he left espn Mm -hmm. um and before the website was up, they had like newsletters and it was all mostly sports articles, but they've branched out and they have like some pop culture stuff that they do now. They actually had this like uh when when everyone was zigging, they zagged, they had this cool article about how how the character development for D C is, is actually better than most of the character development for Marvel. I was like, Oh, you guys are finally seeing this? Like Someone's been listening to our podcast. You realize because just because it's different doesn't make it bad. I was like, right? oh, glad to see like an actual, like well-known outlet fucking write something that's not just insta shitting all over fucking DC stuff. Just because, because ninety nine percent of the DC problems are all at the top, and what's going on, like the the lack of a clear cut plan going forward. But once they commit to something and they do it they have a pretty good fucking success rate with the movies they put out. Yeah. But, yeah, it was cool finally seeing that that article. That's good. I'll have to go read that. What'd you just post to us, Cody? Neil Blomkamp's new movie, Demonic, scheduled for August release date. Yeah. Well, this guy released today. Yeah, it literally, like, two hours ago I think or an hour ago or something like that so alright let's do this give me right? trailer give me trailer give me something August 20th alright yeah I don't even care actually no don't give me a trailer I'm gonna go see it anyways yeah. I don't give a fuck Okay, so the movie's about a supernatural horror. It's a supernatural horror thrill about a young woman unleashing terrifying demons when supernatural forces at the root of a decades-old rift between mother and daughter are ruthlessly revealed. Fair enough. That's all I need to know. I don't care about a trailer. I'm going to skip it. That description there sounds like a uh, uh, an old uh, fuck, what's his name? Sam Raimi movie. Mm, a little bit, yeah. I'm going to say right now, let's skip all trailers for it. Okay. Right? It should be Mike. easy enough for me. Mike, you down? I'm down. All right. No, Nothing more reading about it. No more No more. none of it. Just let's, let's just see it when it comes out. 
Is it hitting theaters and streaming or just theaters? It says release in that article. I didn't see if it said theaters or what. It just said release August 20th. Yeah, it's coming through it. I don't see it either. But I don't care. <laughs> I mean, shit, you want me to buy a ticket now? I'll buy a ticket now. I don't give a fuck. Right. Let's do this. Let's do it. Um, oh, did you guys watch the new trailer for the Mitchells versus the Machines trailer? Nope. Okay. Not yet. That's right. I sent it to you. It's fine. Don't worry. You can ignore it. Um, it's that one that was supposed to release last year, but now is coming right to Netflix. But it's the guys who made uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Okay. Um, as well as the Lego movie, uh, Lego Batman movie. Um, almost made this uh, Han Solo movie. Um, that should be pretty good. Pretty not not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Mm, he says there was something else I wanted to uh, talk about news wise. Oh, I, well, actually, while we're, while we're looking for that, uh, I know Mike watched it. Joe, did you watch uh, the Wrath of Man trailer? I saw it. Yes. Okay. What do you think? It looked pretty cool. Yeah, Guy Ritchie fucking shit up again. Mm-hmm. Goddamn Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie movie with Jason Jason Statham as the lead actor. Mm-hmm. Number f- five of them working together. Was it? Yeah, he usually plays smaller roles in most of them, though. Lock, stock, two smoking barrels, rock and roll, or not rock and roll, uh, um, snatch. Revolver. It's one other one they did together too. And then there's this one. I think this is the fifth one they've done together. That's cool. You get Guy Ritchie and and Jason Statham and a set of movies together. You got my ticket, sir, or my time, or whatever you want to call it, wherever it shows up. I think it's in theaters. Um. Nope. Mm-mm. It's not what I don't know what I was looking for. There was other news I wanted to talk about, and I don't know what I was looking at before. Knives Out sequel to begin filming in this summer. That's cool. I still haven't seen the first one. You haven't seen Knives Out? Nope. You guys went to it without me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I don't know why. I mean, okay. So they're still going forward with the live action Invincible movie. Sure, why not? Have you watched the? the you've been watching the show, right? Yeah. The it's dope. It's so fucking bloody. That's so good. Have you been watching it, Mike? Nope, I haven't nope. made it yet. Well, I was about to say something, but now I'm gonna refrain from saying it. Uh, say it. Well, you already know what happens. I mean, I don't know why I'm spoiling this. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, remember, the whole, the yeah, whole series, so. last episode, I think we were talking about it. Uh, we uh, were mentioning how um, we don't know the time frame, like how far the season goes and how many issues or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we're wondering, like, how long they're going to wait for the – or when we're going to see the the turn of, of Omni-Man slash Nolan uh, to being – to killing the, the Guardians of the Globe. Well, Mike, I'll tell you right now, uh, end of episode one. Yep. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. they jumped it right ahead. Uh, you don't get any real anything. Well, so what they did in the beginning of the episode is they changed it up a little bit because instead of introducing them a little bit later with their individual, like, not backstories, but individual lives and, like, you know, like, Warrior Woman is, like, a, a, a lesbian and like you know, uh, uh, the the I can't think of his name. The fish dude is like sort of this like fish out of water, you know, type of thing, and all these different things. Uh, they literally just have an attack on the president at the White House uh, by the Mahler twins, and the White House is outfitted with all these like deterrents, like giant guns, and like uh, all the like, ar- armored guards are like the guards are making jokes about how they have to go to this seminar about uh, defending. 
uh, or um what to do when super powered people come to the white like to come at you like how you're supposed to like run away essentially um and all these things and the Mauler twins attack so the guardians of the globe show up and they are fucking the 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 Mauler twins up and right at the end omni man shows up and they're all like um huh, i don't know like what are we going to like there's this weird like thing between the, the guardians of the globe and omni man you're like well that's kind of strange and then it goes on to the rest of the episode where, like, Mark doesn't have his powers yet, and he's, he ends up getting them, and he's slowly lo- rolling into how, like, how to fly, and he gets his costume, and then it shows him on top of the crane in the costume, finally at the end, and then you're like, oh, cool, end of the episode, that's cool, that's a good way to end it, right? Boom, it shows all the uh, Guardians of the Globe getting a call to meet at their, their base. They all show up there, and the last one that shows up is uh, Darkwing, is their version of Batman. And uh, um, the immortal says, why did you call us here? And he's like, I didn't call you here. And they're like, what? And then all of a sudden, uh, Omni-Man pulls uh, Darkwing out of the way. And Omni-Man, and, or I mean, Immortal grabs uh, Darkwing out of the way. And Omni-Man almost like takes his head off with a punch. Jesus. And then he just starts going. They all start fighting. And he just fucking dispatches them all in a, in bloody glory including the decapitation of, of the immortal and uh, episode ends. He like collapses in a heap because he's beat up because they were all fucking going town on him and he just falls down. And I was like, well, that was quick. And Paige is like, the fuck just happened? I was like, <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure they're going to explain this to you. Hopefully. But, yet. but like, not yet. Like if you don't know the comic, you're going to be like, uh, isn't he a good guy? <laughs> like, uh, what now? Uh, okay. Yeah, it was real, real sudden. I was like, that is not, not how I thought they were going to do this and that quickly. Cause they had like, like I said, the introduction at the beginning of the episode of, of, of there's a superhero group. And then it wasn't until later. Uh, but, uh, they, like just kind of like oh here's the guardians and it shows them in their daily lives like warrior woman's a a, a ceo of a pre- of a company and like uh um i can't remember the green lantern uh version in this one uh she's a photographer at like doing fashion shoot uh the fish guys underwater and his thing just sitting there on a throne with a bunch of fish swimming around him and then they all come to do you know together and then that's when he kills them all and i was like okay yeah no i guess that's a a way to get to it start the series right yeah like that brings you in in thinking like oh well holy shit like here we go yeah as a person that has only read the first essentially six issues the first trade paperback of uh in of invincible it was all just about him kind of getting his powers and going to school and stuff that's that's what that was about to so to just fucking jump right into it in the series was really weird yeah and it is unabashedly bloody and gory. Yeah. Um, and it's funny too because the and, J- and Joe may uh, may have noticed this. Uh, the one thing that's off camera, air quotes, gun violence. Yeah, it was really bizarre. So the, one of the Mahler twins gets shot in the eye, and when they show it the gun fires off air quotes ca- camera. So you don't see it. He just rears up and is holding his eyes. Like you shot me in my, eye, in my eye or you shot my eye out. And I was like, well, that's super strange. And you see the guns, like the gun, the mounted guns that are on the roof of the white house firing and they're just hitting the dirt and they're hitting them, but the bullets are bouncing off. But I was like, why did they cut gun violence out? But then yet they're doing full on punches where like they're smashing the, like the shit out of the Mahler twins with fists and kicks and throws. But, and then the end of the episode, obviously like the horrific, like death scene, of, like crushing a uh, red rush's head mm. and like the decapitation and the gutting of, uh, the fish. I was like, Holy shit. Like, and I was telling Paige, I was like, but they didn't show the Mahler twin getting shot in the eye with a gun. Man. It was so weird to me. I was like, there were so many other gunfights and people getting shot by laser weapons and stuff. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, like the the think the, anything else of it. The guy with the sonic weapon thing that he went after. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was like, oh. Um, and then of course, uh, Mark Hamill makes his uh his cameo, or his role. He's shown this one because he plays the Taylor guy. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was like uh, I don't know, it was just, it was it was really awesome. I I enjoyed it. The animation's fantastic. The voice acting is is superb. Uh, it just threw me for a loop that they just jumped right to that right away. I was like, oh shit, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of Knives Out uh, sequel. Uh, so one article is talking about how the sequel is going to begin filming this summer. And then down here it says Knives Out sequel lands at Netflix. Really? Interesting. And Ryan Johnson and Daniel Craig to return. <clears throat> well, that seems odd. I just... I don't know why I never thought about it, but yeah, this this movie kind of is perfect because it could just be Daniel Craig going around from place to place solving mysteries. And I was like, oh yeah, that's yeah, that'd be cool. Keep, keep doing that forever. <laughs> huh? That's interesting. Basically, Daniel Craig as Sherlock Holmes. Hell yeah, Sherlock uh, Bond. He has two sequels uh, set up already. Two Knives Out? Yeah, two Knives Out sequels. He has them both written, apparently. That's cool. Well, that's, uh, I mean, good for him. Well, yeah, we'll lead two new uh, Knives Out sequels to the streaming service. The deal could be more than four hundred million, making it one of the largest streaming deals in movie history. Wow! Well, Netflix really wants uh, wants some shit, huh? I mean, it, does, it feels like they haven't really had very much shit in a while. They you know, are um, they are really falling behind on the uh, on a lot of bigger stuff. Uh, I mean, because with the the other platforms now they have their own pro- I mean, they have obviously built in properties HBO Max probably obviously made some of the biggest waves with their whole same as release in theaters on streaming uh, Disney is also obviously making huge waves because they have their original content they already had planned uh, with like the Star Wars stuff and the, the, the Marvel stuff uh, then their original content too like the Mighty Ducks show uh, just started um a lot of their other, you know, Disney centric content of their own. Uh, and they announced that, uh, Luca is going to stream on, uh, the stream on the, on the network, just like soul did. And that, um, uh, what's the new, Oh, Raya obviously was, uh, um, premium access. Uh, so same as theaters, but with the $30 access at home, black widows, the same way, uh, Peacock obviously has like WWE Network now. They also have the only place you can watch The Office other than on Comedy Central. Um, and so there's a lot of that going on. And Netflix obviously is reeling from a lot of that because they lost The Office and lost of a lot of this content they had before. Because I think all the HBO stuff is now gone off of uh, off of Netflix, so you can't watch any of that stuff at least here in the United States. Um, it could be other, I mean, who knows about other countries? I don't, I can't, I don't have a VPN to have access to those. Um, uh, so it's interesting because like they stranger things rumors right now is it may be out at the end of this year, but may not be out until next summer. So that's like a two year gap for that. Um, I think it's more Netflix needs to be a little bit better about promoting their stuff. Um, when they have, because they have a shit ton of really good movies that just kind of get put on there, and you get one trailer for for Netflix stuff like two months before it comes out. You don't get any other anything. You'll see a little bit of fucking like social media press and stuff, but that's it. Like they kind of need to be a little bit better about throwing their shit out there, which maybe is just part of their like, hey, we have these these viewers, you know, these subscribers are going to be here. 
they'll find it, which is also kind of cool. Um, but I feel like I don't feel like they're really and are falling behind. I think it's just the pandemic made it to where the studios put all their movies on streaming services. And so now it's like, oh, Netflix, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, like, Netflix was, because now it's like, oh, HBO Max, I'm, you know, like, tonight, you guys are watching, you know, King Kong versus Godzilla, and that would have been a, you know, we're all going on a Sunday night kind of movie if in a normal world, you know what I mean? Um, but now you get that on HBO Max, but, like, Netflix, it was always just like, we're just going to drop this shit here, and when you're ready, you'll come find it, you know what I mean? I suppose that's true. My problem, I, I guess, with Netflix is, I guess, kind of that. You know, you don't really see any... Like, I, I've seen so many Invincible commercials on YouTube and everywhere that I, I watch stuff. Like, I knew that it was coming out. I've seen, you know, shit tons of Solar Opposites, uh, you know, that came out on Hulu. The last thing that I remember seeing for Netflix was the, the Cecil Hotel thing. And before that was the uh the lion the lion guy uh whatever his fucking name was tiger king. yeah tiger king i didn't watch that but whatever so yeah you are right to me it seems like they're just not really promoting a lot of stuff what well, could be which part means of that i'm not seeing it because i'm not i'm not knowing that it's there and because netflix has this stupid thing about not integrating with like apple tv's uh watch now stuff I totally forget about stuff that I even started watching on Netflix. You know, I started watching Sabrina, the, you know, whatever the Sabrina show was. And I totally forgot about it a week later because it doesn't show up in my line of like, Oh yeah, I, I can continue watching this stuff. At this point I could cancel Netflix if I paid for it and not, not care about it. Yeah, you could say that about everything though. I mean, there's nothing where, I mean, if, if you're just, well, no, but I mean, like, I, I feel like, but I, I'm saying that you're kind of right, is that they're yeah. not advertising the stuff that they have. They have, they probably have a ton of, uh, they probably have a bunch of new comedy uh, specials on there, but I have no idea that they it's have just, them on there because Netflix just ends up being another app on my, my Apple TV because I don't see their advertisements anywhere else saying that, hey, we got this new stuff. You should come and watch it. Well, like, they had, um, well, just, just in the last, like two years they had um uh was the marky Mar uh, spencer confidential yeah that was 2020 like that was a year ago like and you mentioned right that, before pandemic you mentioned that i do remember now seeing like one one yeah. commercial well, or something that's for how it. netflix does it they'll release a trailer for yeah netflix. but it's also I, i'm i i'm sure there's some kind of some nerd somewhere with like some inside info probably has done an article but you know you talk about seeing <clears throat> ads for invincible everywhere but like what does that cost advertising wise you know what i mean and and blockbuster stuff like we're gonna get on i i don't really watch any <clears throat> live tv except for sports now right so if they advertise on like tnt if i'm watching basketball games on tnt or if I'm watching basketball games on Fox Sports Arizona, I'm only getting those ads and those commercials. Like, that's all I'm getting. Um, but those are traditionally where, like, the big blockbuster movies always got their advertisements from. Netflix never fucked with any of that shit. Netflix never put any of their stuff out on, like, actual TV commercials. So I wonder if it's just, a, as of right now, this is their strategy because we're not going to spend marketing money you know, we'll do online, we'll, it'll be there on our Twitter, you know, we'll, on our Instagram, that kind of shit, because those are, for the most part, the people who have Netflix, usually, you know what I mean, are usually app heavy anyway, so, I don't know, it's, I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, it's just interesting how, like, they're, they've just got a completely different, you know, side to it, because I, I'll go through on Netflix every so often and I'll just scroll for a while. I'll be like, all right, what's new? All right, action movies, what's this, what's that? Anything like that and then, but, cause yeah, I'll forget about like, um, there's an awesome, I'm forgetting the movie, but Anthony Mackie's in it and he's like part robot. 
Oh yeah, the oh, um the, no. No, oh, it just it, it just came out. Um, yeah, it's fucking great. It's really really good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, but god damn it. I again, I saw one trailer for it about a month ago and nothing else. Yeah, they'll do that because they'll I have they'll... no idea what you're even talking about. And that yeah. would sound like pretty good. It's got fucking Anthony Mackie in it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's just that's what I mean. It's like it just goes to show you that it doesn't seem like they need to put themselves out more <laughs> and advertise their stuff more. The other thing too to I think to both your points really um I like the reason I know a lot of the Netflix stuff cuz I subscribe to their YouTube channel. So I'll see those come up in my feed where like Joe probably doesn't subscribe to the Netflix YouTube channel. No, I'm more of a passive type person seeing like trailers. That's what I mean. Popped up on YouTube, pop up on on uh Hulu. Those are my two main play, two main things that I watch. So I don't want to have to be an active person like following people or following networks in order to find out what's coming new. And even then they're probably just going to post it once, maybe twice or, you know, when it, once or twice when it's coming closer to the release time, but I can still miss stuff there. Outside the wires, the movie that Mike's talking about yeah. takes place in 2036, a civil war between pro Russian insurgents and local resistance in Ukraine leads the U S to deploy Peacekeeping forces, and then some other stuff goes on. But he's a robot. Um, spoiler: not really because it's in the trailer. Um, yeah. So, and the other thing too, I think, and I th- we've talked about this before. I honestly think the binge stuff is a blessing and a curse. So, one of the reasons they like I say this is because. You can binge watch the shit out of something like so. For for Joe, I don't know how many episodes of Sabrina he watched. He could have watched the first five of eight that are out there, right? Or the first three, whatever it was in a row. Never went back and watched it, right? But if he if he watched like the first one or the first two, whatever, it may be more on top of his mind to go back. Oh yeah, I was watching Sabrina every week on this day. A new episode of Sabrina came out. Where if you binge it, unless you literally binge the whole thing right at once, or if you're watching with somebody else who's like, hey, let's watch this now, and you're trying to get through it, or not trying, but you're trying to finish it within a week to say, I don't know, record a podcast with your friends about it, um, you it may slip your mind to watch it. You know what I mean? But also, to that same point is, the most advertising I've ever seen Netflix do on anything is once something gets socially popular like Tiger King, Tiger King. Like I never saw ads for Tiger King until I started seeing memes and people talking about it online. Then Netflix is like, Oh, here's some money to advertise Tiger King. Cause then I started seeing commercials for it, ads for it on YouTube and other places. So that must've only been YouTube. Cause I still, even things that blow up, I don't ever see ads for them anywhere. I don't even see ads when stranger things drop. I'll see the occasional thing pop up, but I don't, you know what I mean? I'd never see anything else other than just people talking about it. Yeah. And that's what I think. It's a lot of it's word of mouth and it's until it's like Tiger King became massive because it's ridiculous, uh, first off. Um, but also it became a thing of its own where like word of mouth became advertising more than like Netflix put commercials out for it. Like I didn't see them. I didn't see a Tiger King ad during um, all that sports I watch. Um, or anywhere else, it was like, I it, it was like a skippable ad I saw on YouTube, yeah. Or like it was an ad on the side of a news site I was on, or something. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I wasn't watching the Food Network, and all of a sudden the Tiger King commercial came on. So it's a yeah. different type of advertising, but I don't. I think to like Joe's point, they don't. You never see them unless you're going looking for it. And to Mike's point, even the bigger stuff like Outside the Wire. Or even the one, um, the, what's the one with Jamie Jamie Fox with the with the powers? Oh yeah, I don't remember the name of it is, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, like that one, I saw ads for on YouTube, right, right before it came out, and then once it was out, there was nothing else. I never remember seeing anything else for it. Yeah, and it was like there was a trailer, another trailer, and then there was like small little bits, but that was literally all you saw unless you subscribe to their YouTube channels when you were watching 
them. Like I subscribe to the Netflix channel. I subscribe to the Netflix is a joke channel. And I subscribe to the Netflix film school one because I want to absorb the stuff they're doing. Cause that's, they have extras on there that you don't get. Cause for some reason, streaming services don't include extras as a bonus for watching it on their streaming service, which drives me insane still to this day because I want to watch behind the scenes stuff to all these things that I'm watching. Like I would have loved to watch a behind the scenes documentary about the Snyder cut versus having to read all these articles that that have all the same information, but with like a little nugget of new things in it. You know what I mean? Like I would have liked to watch. I like that stuff. And that's one of the reasons I used to collect DVDs and Blu-rays as you both know, especially uh, like the special edition Blu-rays and stuff like that. Yeah. That have cool shit on them. You know, like, Hey, here's some, remember back in the day when Kev Smith first started putting extras on DVDs, dude, you get, like the the Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back like collector's edition DVD that was released at the same time as the regular DVD was released, and it was like five dollars more. Literally had like five hundred hours of extras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was basically every scene they filmed for it with an intro by Kev Smith. It was like a documentary of where the characters have been it was outtakes bloopers it was storyboard like er he threw everything into it and it was awesome you just watch it at your own leisure and you know skip the things you don't give a fuck about yeah but yeah i think but i I think it's just the notoriety of it because like i mean in the last year alone and i might be a little bit off but you netflix has had just movie wise uh Old Guard, Project Power, um, uh, Spencer Confidential, um, what was the one with Hamsworth? Um, uh, um, oh, yeah, did I did watch that one? Yeah, the ex- extraction. extraction, extraction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those four right there alone were fucking awesome. Uh, you know what? what I mean? the what's the one with uh uh. Uh, ben Affleck and uh, were there the the dudes that went I in? I never and... got around to watching that one. I kept forgetting oh, it. With Pedro, and, and, yeah. But that leads to the other thing that I would that I was saying about Netflix is that they don't integrate into like the Apple TV watching yeah. stuff. I could literally be sitting there going, "Oh yeah, I want to watch that. Let me add it to my list of of watch now stuff, which is the front and center of my Apple TV, rather than my watch you know wish list in Netflix, which I have to." go hunting for half the fucking time. That's the thing too, is Netflix's app on, I don't know. I've never used it really on so much on the iPad or, uh, the website or anything like that. But on the Apple TV is atrocious. Yeah. Like it's never, there's never any consistency to it. And like the, when you go back, you click on something details, you go back and it seems like it's a whole different list of things so you would have saw like, oh, I'm going to check that out in a second. You go back, and that one's gone. And then the whole thing of, like, every movie or show has a different uh, label to it every time you see it. You know what I mean? Like, it's a different picture or title uh, sequence that they show on there. And, like, what the well, hell? That's, that's done with reason because if one cover art doesn't get you interested – when you're scrolling another subcategory, it might, you know, something else might pique your interest. But I, I don't, I, I get like the, um, like the continue watching or listing, but like I've heard people complain about that before, but I've never had to scroll down more than like five bars to get to anything that I needed on there. It's like down, 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 up, there it is, you know, which is annoying. It should always be stationary in the same spot, but. Huh. Because if I'm coming back to watch a series, if I didn't binge something and I'm coming back to watch a series, sometimes when I go back into the app, there it is right there. Continue watching. Sometimes I go back into it and I go, okay, is it down that I have to get? No. Is it back up that I have to go? But okay, fucking there it is. I shouldn't have to to search for that type of stuff. That's all, you know, I shouldn't have to go down to continue watching something. I agree. Yeah. Um, so they just announced the voice cast for – not to change subjects like a fucking psychopath. Uh, they just announced the voice cast for um, Batman The Long Halloween Part 1, uh, which is a PG-13 rated animated adaptation of the fan favorite Batman story. 
How many parts is it going to be? 12 parts? Uh, give me 11. I have no idea. It just says part one, so I'm not too sure. Uh, so we only released an episode on a holiday that it corresponds with. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. So so Easter is the first one. We get it on Sunday. I'm going down. down. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but it'll be part one will be released in late spring or early summer 2021 is what it says here. Uh, I don't briefly know. I don't see anything in there. Anyways, uh, Jason Eccles of, uh, well, two, two part fame, uh, supernatural fame, obviously. Uh, and, uh, soon to be the boys season three fame. Uh, but really yeah. also he played, he voiced Jason Todd in the, uh, Batman under the red hood animated movie. He'll be voicing Batman and Bruce Wayne. Um, I didn't know this person passed away, but apparently Naya Riviera from Glee fame uh, died in July of 2020. She voices Selena Kyle, Catwoman, uh, which is, I didn't know she passed away. That sucks. Um, and it says here in a dumb statement, uh, Holly Reporter says that Riviera completed her voice recording sessions for Long Halloween Part 1 and Part 2. So maybe there's Part 2, 1 and 2, Mike, uh, before her death. No shit. <laughs> I don't think they got her to come back and finish it afterwards. Dummies. Anyways. Um, filling out the cast are Josh Dumel as Harvey Dent. Um, Billy Burke as James Gordon. Titus uh, Weverly, I guess how you play this, is Carmine Falcone. Uh, I don't know how to say this guy's name. Uh, David Dasmakian. He was in Ant-Man. Uh, he was the Russian guy. He also plays Polka Dot Man in the new Suicide Squad movie. That guy, he plays uh, Calendar Man, so that's fun. Troy Baker as the Joker. Um, Amy uh, Landecker as Barbara Gordon. Julie Nathanson as uh, Gilda Dent. Uh, Jack Quaid uh, from The Boys uh, is as, as Alberto. Uh, Fred, I'm going to butcher this name for sure. Um, Tatascori? as uh, Solomon Grundy, Alistair Duncan as Alfred, and there's other people who don't have roles yet, um, and uh, none of them are really big names, but those are the ones they've listed so far. Uh, m- mainly because those other ones are probably in uh, Part 2, uh, which is the other six uh, seasons they get, or holidays they go through um, in that one. So that's pretty fun. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um and I don't know why, Joe. You you use you go to comicbook.com a lot, right? For new uh, stuff. Yeah. Does it bother you when the video that pops up at the top of the article has nothing to do with what you're reading? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Are you going through the Apple News section yeah. side of things? Yeah. It. There are so many different uh, uh, news sources that do that as well. Uh, it, it bothers the fuck out of me. Like. Even just having an image, you'll be like, oh, okay, it's a really small thumbnail. I want to see exactly what that is. Click on the article, and then it doesn't even show that fucking pic- picture. Yeah, it drives me insane. Yeah, I I hate it so much. Like, in this one, for this particular article, they actually have the thumbnail is an image from Long Halloween. Mm-hmm. So you click on it, thinking, you know what I'm going to see? I'm going to see Long Halloween, right? Yeah. So what no. do I see? I see Battenson standing next to Catwoman in the new Batman suit, and it's a video, which I haven't watched because I'm not going to watch it now because I'm not going to pay royalties for this. And it has the little zoom-in thing of him having a gun on his hip, which mm-hmm. just could be a, a fucking battering thing, but whatever, I'm not going to go there. And then you scroll down, and nowhere in this article do they show me the picture that they have in the thumbnail. Nope. It, it's infuriating. I hate it so much bro it's like um can i please have the picture that you so- showed me just now like what is wrong with you yeah i don't know whatever um to me it, it drives me insane because every time i go i'm like oh I'm look at this picture and that picture's not there and they have to go to google search it which is oh so difficult but it'd be nice if it was just in the fucking article that you have here yeah um I forgot that I opened a tab with this Invincible creator teases how live action movie will differ from animated series. Um, I guess it's an, uh, a, a talk with uh, Robert Kirkman. Um, but uh, I didn't realize 
I thought Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, uh, the producers and and adaptation creators of Preacher and the Boys, uh, were doing the animated one because Seth Rogen is doing a voice on the animated one. They're the ones doing the live action movie. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, because Seth Rogen plays Alan the Alien, in the or voices Alan the Alien in the animated show. But apparently, yeah. he's doing, he's producing the movie, the live action movie for Invincible. Um, I didn't read the whole thing, but I do know the one thing he says is um, Mark Grayson will not be played by Stephen Yun of The Walking Dead fame uh, because a he's too old. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know how fucked up it would have been it's like hey he's Asian <laughs> yeah right <laughs> like, Ooh. can't say that shit um yeah no uh yeah it's it that's all I mean, it really says in there um that I really noticed but uh I, I'm, I'm okay with the movie too I don't know how they're gonna short what they're gonna do for the premise of the movie um because there's a lot of shit even in that first episode you would get the first episode is 49 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and barely touched on anything in that world of Invincible, uh, other than the fact that if anyone paid attention, uh, all the uh, the the human-ish race that uh, Nolan or Omni-Man comes from, uh, all the males have mustaches, which I thought was hilarious that uh, mm-hmm. they showed in that, because they show uh, the planet, and he's talking to Mark about when he was younger, about him being from another planet, and how he has powers and someday Mark will get the same thing. Uh, and he shows the planet and all the dudes have mustaches just like uh, Nolan does. And I thought that was really funny. Uh, Cause that was always a big thing in the, in the comic book is uh, all the, the Viltrumites had mustaches, all the men, uh, some of the women actually had very slight mustaches too. Uh, but I thought it was pretty funny. They showed that in the cartoon or the animated one. I shouldn't call it a cartoon. Interesting. That was a, uh, through odd to me, but that the tangent about the whole article thing on on here is it just drives, comicbook.com it drives me insane on Apple News. Because even this one, like WrestleMania, right? So WWE Raw spoilers reveal two more WrestleMania 37 matches. I'm not gonna read the article because I don't care. You click on it, and it has the WrestleMania banner and a video that's supposed to, it probably has talks about it. Cool, that's exactly what I expected to see. Falcon Winter Soldier uh, did episode two already spoils Emo's fate. Click on it, and you get the image for uh, the episode twice. Uh, by the way, of him holding the mask on, but you click on some of the other ones and they don't show you the image. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Why am I not getting this? Whatever, it's dumb. Um, do 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 do. Was there anything else to talk about? Nothing I saw. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. if we release this in order, this episode will actually come out next week. Uh, I think. Um, and the episode we're gonna record after we've all seen Godzilla vs. Kong will probably come out this Friday, but it's all new, so it doesn't really matter. You just listen to us rant about random shit, um, and complain about stupid first world problems. Um, I think that's it. Anything else? Anybody? No, nope, I didn't see anything else this week. Just short a bunch of and sweet. Bitching about the Snyderverse. Oh, fucking stupid people. Fans are the worst thing to happen to anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I ain't got nothing else. Hey, Mike, did you forget John Goodman was in Kong Skull Island? I did. Me too. <laughs> Cause I I try to convince Jen to watch these movies with me, and she she wasn't having it. So I was like, well, at least watch the trailer for Kong School Island. It's got Sam Jackson in it. You'll you'll like the movie. Started watching it, and I was like, oh shit, I forgot Loki was in it too. And, and, and Captain John Marvel. Goodman, I was like, oh shit, John Goodman's in this. <laughs> and she's like, have you seen this? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good. It's a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fun time. Uh, okay, yeah, no, that's it for this week's episode. Comes naturally. We haven't actually done an opening. We are Joe, Mike. I am Cody. Mike is bouncing off the walls, and that's it for this week's episode. Everybody, uh, tune in next week when we talk about some other stuff. But also, you know, check out 
the last episode when we talked about Godzilla vs. Kong and our impressions, and hopefully Mike will have watched it by tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay, that's a confirmation of uh, not really going to be done. Uh, oh, update. I was going to bring this up to Joe uh, yesterday, or earlier, or yesterday or whatever I saw him last. Uh, Mike, how much more RoboCop have you watched since the last time we talked? I build on three. I was like, I, I uh, fuck three. I didn't want to watch three. It's a good call. It's um, a good call. But I did. I watched the uh, the Alter Carbon one. <laughs> What's that guy's name? Uh, Joe Kinnerman. I watched that one. The Rick Flag version. The other day. I fucking like it, man. I, I yeah. A lot of people hated it. I was like, could have been rated R and real fucked up. Probably would have made it, you know, feel more like a RoboCop. But like, what do you expect them to do? You can't put them in a big giant suit and have them lumber around. It's fucking. 2000 what 17 we have the technology to make him look better yeah like yeah. you can't you know that was part of like it was funny with bob because bob i was watching him with babo and and he's seen him before but like he's all like you know, that's one of the things he's all like robocop's cool but he looks funny when he moves i was like yeah <laughs> yeah man like, yeah, yeah. i totally get it because he does he looks and it's peter weller fucking doing a robot walk you know what i mean to make it feel more mechanical and everything but and everyone bitched about the newer one i i wish it did better because i i totally would have been into a fucking second one of with that guy that would have been awesome yep me too all right cool yeah uh i said that question um Mm -hmm. like what we say at the end of these you fuckers just came naturally bye bye yeah 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 Okay, good one.